Tons of Linux distributions have came out this year, and I have tried 36 of them. Today, I will be awarding some of the best Linux distributions that have came out this year. We will be starting with the award for the most beautiful Linux distro. For this, I have three candidates. Elementary OS Juno, Deepin 15.8, and Zorin OS 12.4. Elementary is nice, but it doesn't work on every system, and a lot of people think it just looks like a Mac OS knockoff. Zorin OS 12.4 looks nice, but it's resource heavy on GNOME, and it's stuck on Ubuntu 16.04, despite the fact that 12.4 came out in August of this year. This means some packages are ancient, and thus you install lots of PPAs. So, that leaves Deepin, which I think is the most beautiful of all my candidates, but there has been some data collection controversies. I will be giving this award to Deepin because, even though it did have some controversies involving data collection, this award is just for the most beautiful distro, not the best distro. So that's why I will be giving this award to Deepin. My Discord server also agrees that Deepin is gorgeous, and Deepin was the most beautiful distribution voted by the community out of those three. My next award goes to the best lightweight distro. These are the best distros to put on older computers. For this award, the candidates are Linux Lite 4.2, Peppermint OS 9, and Bode Linux 5.0.0. Bode Linux is the most beautiful of the three, but other than the Moksha desktop, it doesn't have any features that really stand out. While Peppermint has ice and Linux Lite has light tools. Peppermint OS is very similar to Chrome OS. It has a program called Ice that lets you turn any website into a progressive web app. It also has a useful settings panel and the Mint software manager. This distro is probably the best alternative to Chrome OS. Linux Lite is the fastest, and it also has light tools which helps you customize your distro, fix issues, and maintain your systems. Linux Lite is also very stable. I think Linux Lite is the winner of this award because it's the easiest to maintain because of light tools. My Discord server also voted Linux Lite as the best light distro with Peppermint OS close behind. Now for the award, the best distro for gaming. These distros were chosen for features that enhance gaming. The reason SteamOS won't be a candidate in this one is because it's based on Debian 8 from 2007, and there hasn't been a release since the preview for 2.0 released back in 2015. Also, I think we all know that SteamOS is just Debian with Steam's big picture mode. Therefore, it isn't a very good distro for gaming. The actual candidates for this award are Solus 3.9999, Zubuntu 18.10, and Laka 2.2. Solus has Steam Linux integration, which allows you to change the way Steam behaves, and it helps you fix broken games. Now, Zubuntu, along with Lubuntu, had the best frame rate for CSGO of any distros I've tried this year. The reason I chose Zubuntu instead of Lubuntu as the candidate is, even though the frame rate is the same, Zubuntu just feels more modern, so that's why I chose that one as the candidate. Laka is a distribution for retro gaming, but it's basically just full screen retro arch, the distribution. It can't do anything else than retro arch. Laka could be good for turning old computers into a retro game console, but it's not the best Linux distro for gaming. This leaves Zubuntu and Solus. I will be going to choose Solus as the winner because Steam Linux integration is that useful for me. Sure. Zubuntu has better frame rate, but only around 25 frames more than Solus. If you want to squeeze out every bit of performance, go with Zubuntu or Lubuntu. But I'm going to choose Solus as the best gaming distro. Once again, my Discord server agrees and has voted Solus as the best gaming distro, with Zubuntu close behind. The next award is the best netbook distro. The candidates for this one are Peppermint OS 9, Cloud Ready Chrome OS, and Zubuntu 18.10. Peppermint OS has ICE, 
which lets you turn websites into progressive web apps. It also uses Mint Software Manager, which in my opinion is one of the best software managers for Ubuntu-based distros. Peppermint OS also has a setting panel, which is very useful for customizing your system. Chrome OS is basically Google Chrome, but they made it into an operating system. It's very polished and easy to use, however Google collects data from you, and it's very locked down and you can't access most Linux utilities. If you buy a Chromebook, some of them have Android apps and even support for Linux apps, but right now, cloud-ready Chrome OS, you can't get these features. Zubuntu is Ubuntu's XFCE spin, and while it's pretty ugly out of the box, it is very fast and snappy, and it's very customizable. However, the winner for this award is going to Peppermint OS. It has all the features of Chrome OS without the data collection, plus the ability to install Linux packages. Subuntu so is also good, but Peppermint OS has more features and it feels more modern. My Discord server also voted Peppermint OS as the best distro for netbooks. Now for the award of the best Linux distro for new users coming from Windows. My candidates for this one are Farron OS 2018.10, Zorin OS 12.4, and Solus 3.9999. Farron OS and Zorin has a layout switcher to make it look like different operating systems. Both have a web browser manager, and both are made for new users. However, Zorin uses a version of GNOME which is very resource heavy and hard to customize, and some features of Zorin OS are locked behind a pay paywall. And Farron OS uses Cinnamon, but Farron OS can be very buggy at times. My other candidate is Solus, which has a very similar interface to Windows 7. While it doesn't have the layout and browser manager features from Farron OS and Zorin, it has a very good software center, the Raven menu is great, and it's very easy to use and polished. For the winner of this award, I will be choosing Solus because of how polished and easy to use it is. Farron OS and Zorin are more feature rich, but both have issues such as being resource heavy and having a lot of bugs. Again, my Discord server agrees on this and voted Solus as the best for people distro hopping from Windows. Now that we've done the best Linux distro for new users switching from Windows, we will be doing the best distro for new Mac OS users switching to Linux. The candidates for this award are Deepin 15.8, Elementary OS Juno 5.0, and Ubuntu Budgie 18.10. Deepin 15.8 uses the Deepin desktop environment, which is a beautiful desktop. However, there have been some controversies about data collection, and it's very system heavy. Mac OS users might also be annoyed by the fact that the system tray is part of the dock. Elementary OS is good, but it doesn't work on every computer, and the App Center has issues, making it not very good for new users. This leaves Ubuntu Budgie 18.10, which I think is the very best alternative. Other than that, the Raven menu is very similar to Mac OS's notification bar. It's very easy to use, and it's very stable and polished. So, this award is going to Ubuntu Budgie 18.10. However, my Discord server disagrees, and the vote is a tie between Elementary OS and Deepin, with Ubuntu Budgie only losing by one vote. The next award is the most unique Linux distribution, and the candidates are Solus 3.9999, Nutric OS 1.1.2, and the Shell OS. Solus is not based on any other distributions, it has its own desktop environment called Budgie, and it has its own package manager called EOPKG, and its own app center. Nutrix OS has the Nomad desktop, which is really just a customized KDE and its own app center that uses only app images. The last candidate is the Shell OS. This is based on Arch, but it has its own desktop called the Shell. And it also has its own applications, such as the Beat, the Terminal, and the Package, which is a package manager. I'm giving this award to Solus because of all the exclusive features. Sure, Budgie came to Ubuntu and several other distributions, but Solus invented it. Once again, my Discord server agrees and voted Solus as the most unique distribution. Now, for you tinkerers out there, it's time for the most customizable award. 
Now, I could easily just give this to Arch, Dentu, or LFS. But we will be adding a condition. It must be easy to install too. So the award is the most customizable, but easy to install. The candidates for this are Ubuntu Mini 18.04, OpenSUSE's Net Install ISO, and Manjaro Architect. Manjaro Architect is the most customizable, but it's also the hardest to install. And it's Arch-based, so it's probably not the best for new users. OpenSUSE's Net Install is the easiest to install, but the options to customize your installation are kind of hidden away. And yes, I'm going to plug my channel, but if you want help with the OpenSUSE Net Install, I did a tutorial on how to customize your installation. OpenSUSE's Net Install also has the least amount of options to customize. Ubuntu Mini 18.04 has the best of both worlds. It is easier to install than Manjaro Architect, but it has more c options to customize than OpenSUSE. And it is also based on Ubuntu, so it is very stable as a distribution. However, it's still more tricky than OpenSUSE, so you might want to watch a tutorial on how to install it, which I should make, but I haven't yet. I think that for the award, we will be giving the award to Ubuntu Mini because it's easier to install than Manjaro Architect, but it's more customizable than OpenSUSE's Net Install ISO. And my Discord server agrees, and Ubuntu Mini won. If you want your operating system to stay stable, check out one of these distros. The next award goes to the most stable Linux distribution. The candidates for this award are Debian 9, Linux Mint 19.1, and Solus 3.9999. I chose Debian 9 because it's running ancient versions of packages, and I have never had any stability issues on it. The ancient packages are harder to break, also. So if you want bleeding edge packages, don't use this distro. Linux Mint 19.1 is a candidate because I've also never had any stability issues on Linux Mint either, but it has more up-to-date packages than Debian. Sure, it does use the Ubuntu repositories, but Ubuntu with GNOME is very unstable. Solus 3.9999 is the most stable rolling release distro. Although Solus's old ISO broke when you updated it through the software center, 3.9999 has fixed that. However, I'll be giving this award to Debian 9, simply because it is the most stable distro there is. And Discord agrees with me on that. Now, we will be giving the award of the best distro overall. The candidates for this one are Linux Mint 19.1, Solus 3.9999, and Ubuntu Budgie 18.10. Solus, Ubuntu Budgie, and Linux Mint are all stable, polished, low well on resources compared to GNOME and KDE, and easy to use. Solus and Mint also have great package managers. Now I have to choose one of these candidates. They are all good, but I'm going to pick, drumroll please, Solus 3.9999. It's stable, it has tons of features, and it's always the distro I install when I have issues with other distros. However, my Discord server disagrees and says that Linux Mint 19.1 is the best. But I think all three of these are good, and I only like Solus slightly better than the other two. Now for the community's picks for the top three distros. I ran a poll on my YouTube channel, and these are the results. I ended up getting 113 votes. The third most popular distro with 11 votes is Peppermint OS 9. The second most popular distro is Linux Mint 19.1 with 13 votes. And the distro with the most votes is Arch Linux with 16 votes. I know the number of votes is kind of small, but keep in mind I am a small YouTuber channel and there were 22 distributions to choose, so. Thank you for watching this video. I've been working so hard on this video. It's like all I've been doing for like three days. And I will hope you consider liking this video. Peace out.